<laughs> Good evening. Hello, everybody. How Good are evening. you doing? <laughs> oh, so nice to be back again. I can't believe it's been two weeks, actually. It's mad how two weeks have flown by. It goes really fast. I think because yeah. we're like riding and messaging each other after the last show and then we're getting yeah. ready for the next one. But life is just going yeah. at a frantic pace. But hello yeah, to everybody right watching. Hello to everyone hello, who's hello. watching. Hello, hello to everyone who's watching live. Hello to people who are watching on Catch Up. Please do drop your comments in, even if you're only just joining us and it's after the live show, because we do like to always get your comments and your feedback. It all works. The energy all works, whether you're watching live or whether you're watching on Catch Up. It's just you're meant to hear what you're meant to hear. And that's the way it is. So, hello, we're just going to say hello to some people that are coming in. We've got people. So we have people on Facebook. We have people on YouTube. We are not be able to tell if we've got you on TikTok. We're not on TikTok. We're not on TikTok. We're not on TikTok, but we're on YouTube and Facebook. So please do say hello. Say where you're from, where in the world you are. We always like to give a shout out to the person who's dialing in from the furthest away. Uh, also, we need to mention as well that Wendy, unfortunately, is not with us tonight. Oh. She's not feeling very well. So we're going to send our love and healing to Wendy as well this evening. So please, yeah, do this evening. Mm. You get a moment. Um, we yeah, we, we are going to send some healing to Wendy. Yeah, thank you, but mm. a shame she can't be with us. And we will see you soon, Wendy. Yeah, absolutely. But we might have a surprise. So stay tuned. I'm going to give you a massive hook at the start of the show. We might have a surprise guest later on. You don't know who it's going to be, but we know who it's going to be. So please do stay tuned. Oh, oh, Richard, you've just, you've just broken the wall, away. Richard. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, brilliant. 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 Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Well, we do have a very special guest who's going to be joining us. So we're very much looking forward to that. So um, you will have the pleasure, obviously, of myself, Ashley, and um, Nat, as per usual. But we'll also have a very special guest coming to join us. So who have we got coming on? First and foremost, Debbie Chard from South Wales. Hello, Debbie. How Hi, are you Debbie. doing? Antonio. Hello. How are you? <laughs> Hello, Antonio. Lovely to have you with us. Hello, Sharon from Doncaster. Lovely to have Hi, you with Sharon. us on Facebook. And we've got Elaine. Welcome, Elaine. Hello, Elaine. Good to have you with us. And Mark as well. Hi, Mark. Hello, Mark. That looks like a nice model railway you've got there. And your profile picture, lovely. So we've got Gina. Hello, Gina. And I'm going to try and pronounce your name. Kanzulo Coppola. Beautiful. What a, what a stunning name. Hello to you. Ah, Diane from Edinburgh, Scotland. Me and Minty are going to Scotland at the end of May. Are you? Oh, we booked our trip. No, I know that's what we've been doing actually the last couple of weeks. We're going up there, yeah. And to Inverness. Oh, beautiful. And a whole trip. I've never been. So I'm really looking forward to it. You are going to be in for a treat. And there's some proper mm. spooky places up there. If you're interested in the witch trials and like sacred sites, oh, you're going to have a there's a, there. Yeah, apparently there's a witch's museum in Edinburgh, which I'm interested in going to see. So that'll be one of them. You'll have an amazing <laughs> time. Hello, Ben from Leicester. Lovely to have you with us, Ben. Beautiful. Hi, Ben. And Catherine from Norfolk. Hello, Catherine from lovely Norfolk. Hello, Kim. Good to have you with us. Oh, it's not, thank you Hi, so Kim. much. That's a really nice welcome. Um, and then Nikki as well from Hertfordshire. Hi, Nikki. <laughs> Hello, Sarah Tink Weston. Good to have you with us, Settlin. Oh. Mm. We will, we will. We're yeah, just going to say, oh. look, more, more Scots are in. Sharon from Dundee. See, that's it. You've oh, called in the Scottish it's power. All about in... Scotland. It's all about Scotland. <laughs> Always God's country. I can say that because my dad is Scott. My family is oh, Scott. So, yeah. Love Inverness. Oh, I'm looking, so looking forward to it, Nicola. I've never been up there, so it's going to be beautiful. beautiful. Fantastic. So it's we amazing. might be able to get a live broadcast from Scotland then, from you and Minty. Might just like, you know, get on the old live stream. Start to do some. Yeah, I might, I might send some. Scotland. Yeah, send. Oh, that'd be interesting, <laughs> wouldn't it? Yeah, it would be. <laughs> Leave that with Richard to decide. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> keep it clean. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. If only you could so, hear everyone yeah. sat home. I'm sure you're getting a vibe by now. If you've been around SBTV long enough, 
I'm sure you're mm. getting the vibe that what we get in our ears sometimes is stuff that we cannot say. We cannot yes. say because we will not be able to go out live if we say it. So um, <laughs> as you can appreciate, there's a lot of banter without Wendy here to keep us all in check tonight. That's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> So, so, so actually, do we? What's the, uh, yeah. Sorry. Carry on. <laughs> oh, go. Go, go, go. I was just saying, what's the topic tonight? What are we discussing? Well, it's a very interesting topic, um, and we would love, as ever, you to be part of this because you are part of our virtual circle of people, and we would love your feedback because we always get really good comments. But the topic we're going to be talking about this evening is about spiritual protection. Mm. Now, there are two ways we took it, because when we first started talking about this, didn't we, Nat? There were like two different mm. ways that we can look at this. So the first way is probably more so about um, what you do energetically to kind of ground yourself, connect yourself, make sure you're working to your light, make sure you're working, you know, um, in integrity and to the highest and best. And then the other way to look at it, which is the way I interpreted it, which is very interesting, completely differently is around you know how you use your discernment as you're growing and unfolding spiritually to know whether you're in the right place how to choose Absolutely. your spiritual teachers yeah. um yeah. so yeah we're going to take it in whichever way it's going to go tonight um yeah. and we'd love your feedback topic. Yeah, topic. Really looking forward to it mm -hmm. yeah so fantastic antonio yep angelic protection anything like that so if you've got some really interesting stuff because um I'm sure everyone watching this is in a different place with their spiritual development. And as we know, there is no race. We're all different. We all unfold differently. We've all got different gifts. Um, so there is no kind of like right or wrong. Put your comment in because um, it might actually be something that someone might resonate with and go, oh, I'd never thought about that. That's really interesting. Well, that's how I work. So, um, yeah, drop drop your comments in. So do we want to bring in um, our third honorary um, living spiritually soul sister? Do we want to bring them in? sat there all patiently. Can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to bring our very special guest in? And it'd be a very, very, very familiar face to SPTV. Very well loved. We could only really talk about a subject like this if we had Minty May with us. Hello, Minty. Yeah. <laughs> Good evening, everyone, and thank you for Ooh. allowing me to be an honorary sister this evening. Oh, oh, I'm else. really looking forward to it. You were um, the obvious choice. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> and I'm really excited about the subject that we're going to talk about tonight. I must admit, it's going to be absolutely awesome. And it's a real pleasure to be able to do a live with you guys. So thank you so much. Oh, it's so lovely to have you here, Mincy. Thank you for joining us. It is. Nice. It's really nice to have you. Yeah. So, so I'm really interested in. Um. So every everyone out there is going to start chipping in their comments. Um. And we are going to do some live reads as well. Um. As we always offer some live reading. So, um. We will be drawn to you. So you don't need to do anything. You don't need to put numbers or colours or anything like that. Um. Just keep adding to the conversation, and then we will be drawn to people that we want to um kind of pull in for a reading. We've got the option of the Zoom live reading, as we always do. Um, if you want to be on live, it's great for us because we get the instant feedback, which is amazing. Um, or if you want to just stay and um, kind of respond to comments, you can do that as well. Mm. Oh, look. Oh, look. Yay, oh. Minty. <laughs> this is the Minty fan club in. Quick, share yeah. it with your friends. <laughs> Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, thank you guys so much for making me feel welcome tonight. I really, really do appreciate it. <laughs> oh, thank you, Debbie. Yeah, I really appreciate that kind comments. Good choice, so, good uh, choice. Coming through. <laughs> <laughs> super, oh. super. So you're up for some, doing some readings with us, Minty, a bit later on? Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah, that'd be fantastic, awesome. Fantastic, fantastic. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. So should we start with the first comment then? Because Karen, you are up and you're typing away. So Karen's talking about staging a house when she moved in. <laughs> oh my gosh, your ex reacted badly to it, coughing and trouble, and he had to leave the house. You should have known that he was no good. There's a clue in that, isn't there? Karen, <laughs> you have taken the subject to a dark, mysterious and sarcastic place. I love it. <laughs> I was just thinking the sign. <laughs> Karen, that's really... There's a meme, I'm sure, on Facebook, which is like an audio of someone saging their house and then the children coughing and saying, be gone, be gone, yeah. and, and like pushing them out of the house. It's funny, isn't it? Hindsight. Hindsight's a wonderful thing. So sage is obviously one thing that's really popular um, and mm -hmm. kind of... I know sage is the term that we use, but um, I don't know if we're going to get into it. But you know, there is there is um, 
concern about sage and where you source it from you know and it's something we can talk about um actually in our spiritual mm -hmm. practice how we make sure that we are acting from a place of integrity as spiritual practitioners mm -hmm. and actually some of these spiritual practices are sacred sacred practices um to indigenous faith indigenous belief um so you know when we use terms and when we source our products where are we get them from interesting question okay. interesting topic thank you karen do you feel that you do you feel that you just have to use sage or are you on the same kind of feeling as me that because i always think if you don't like the smell of sage, why the hell would you save your house because it's going to kind of counterintuitive yeah. of how it's worked so i've always been a firm believer use something you like the smell of because at least then you're putting that in it's the intention rather yeah. than the smell does that make Absolutely. sense yeah, yeah. Abs absolutely. Um, and I know that sage is popular because of the metaphysical properties associated with sage as a herb when yeah. you burn it. But um, so from I'm talking about Scotland, so in the kind of more Celtic spirituality, Celtic spiritual schools, which kind of resonate more with me, um, mm. saining um, is you can use various different herbs and I always choose an indigenous, something that's local to me. So I grow lavender organically in my garden. I often make lavender bundles. Um, which I use or kind of dried my own dried sage um, as opposed to like buying a bundle pre-made from white sage plantations. So, yeah, I you've got to use what I love, love, the love it. They're so beautiful. Oh, yeah. They come into flower. Yeah. Oh, they really are. I can remember yeah. my grand having a massive, I mean, massive lavender bushes. Yeah. And uh, obviously she would always encourage her bees around them as well. So, yeah, beautiful. Yeah. I must admit, but as Nat knows, myrrh is one of my favourites, and I love yeah. myrrh, I must admit. It's like whenever she's like, not oh, incense, shall I burn? And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I like my frankincense, frankincense and myrrh. I've done that together before. That's actually really nice. <laughs> it's really nice. It's, it's really good. I love it when you go to um, places like Glastonbury and they've got all of the different things burning and you kind of stand outside and go, oh, what's that? And it's like, it's our special blend of this. You're brilliant. I'll have some of that. <laughs> something else as well. well it could be we did talk about it. <laughs> hello 21 from glastonbury hello yeah. <laughs> sorry i'm just very much like, love that out there. see karen we're only 18 minutes into the show karen already grow grow your own lavender literally it's a game changer grow your own lavender and you get the beautiful pollinators all summer and then harvest it and then dry it and there we go can burn it and it's such a hardy plant as well it, as long as it's got sunlight it's happy you don't have to i mean at the moment you probably don't have to worry about watering it because of all the <laughs> rain that we've got yeah. but on the whole lavender is pretty damn impossible to kill um <laughs> say that i'm not a gardener <laughs> <laughs> so it probably would test my limits but no on the whole lavender is pretty hardy in most soils mm. yeah so you find what you like, but you can use intention. And do you mm. know what? The best kind of spiritual practice is the spiritual practice you do, not the one that you read yeah. about and buy all the stuff and then never get around to doing it because of X, Y, Z factors. The best spiritual practice is the one you stick with. So if it resonates with you, using lavender, burn that. Um, yeah. Oregano is also nice because you can burn that. That smells amazing. It smells like pizza cooking when you burn it, but it's very nice. It doesn't upset the neighbours as much as sage. <laughs> Oh, just <laughs> I don't know why that's, that's taking a turn, isn't it? I'm starving. Um, so, <laughs> Court, Courtney was talking about cinnamon oil. Nice. Oh, yeah. Spicy. Oh, nice. use eggs from a uh, black hen around the property. I've never heard of that before. That's interesting. Nice. What do you do with that? Just sprinkle it around? Sprinkle it around. Yeah. You can also mm. put a salt ring around your property as mm. well. Oh, and that's it. another really nice protection to do and it stops any negative energy coming in or like i've done for you nat in uh, yeah the selenite place. above the door love mm. that tiny little piece of selenite just hidden above the door yeah no one yeah, knows yeah. that it's there but it just yeah. nicely cleanses people as they walk through yeah you must be psychic look at that debbie saying what's that stands <laughs> around the house for negative vibes yeah i've got a big <laughs> lump I've got a big lump of tourmaline as well, which oh. I keep by, which is a really nice little lump, and it's kind of tucked, tucked inside the doormat, and I do that as well. Same, same. Like, my desk find... and all the crystals on it. <laughs> 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 yeah, 
Yeah. We also yes. find though, if the negative energy doesn't disappear too qu quickly enough, that if you throw the tourmaline at the person, they soon move. <laughs> <laughs> Not condoning that in any shape or form at all. <laughs> That's that. <laughs> yeah, I've got. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Super. It's surprising how quickly it works. <laughs> Super. Love that. Love that. I now I've got to tell you a funny story. I know she won't be watching. Um, because this is not her spirituality is not really her wheelhouse. But um, we went to a neighbor's house and um, my daughter, who is nearly nine, who has been born and brought up with spirituality for her magic, spirituality, meditation. It's all completely normal stuff. Brilliant. Done my job. Pass it on. I've done my job. Mm -hmm. But we went to somebody's house and she said, oh, you've got salt, salt outside your house. She said, is that to help keep the energy clean in your house? And she said, no, <laughs> it's to stop pests coming into the house in the wet weather. <laughs> Um, and of course, at that moment, I said, "Okay, it's time for us to leave. It's time for us to go." <laughs> Talk about when the worlds collide, spirituality and pest control. I just thought that was just how my life rolls. So, yeah, circles of salt, brilliant idea, brilliant idea. I love circles of salt. I must admit, it's a yeah. great one. It is and if you're into magic there's a load of really 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 good stuff on the internet i suppose it's one of the positives of social media is that mm -hmm. all of a sudden all of us kind of like people who are into magic and esoteric knowledge and spirituality and different practices actually we found our tribe online we found our people so there's yeah, lots of people absolutely. out there talking about different mm -hmm. spiritual practices and things to do and but there is a downside to that there is a downside mm. to social media. There's a downside to this explosion of interest in spirituality. Um, so I, I suppose it's kind of like, Minty, we haven't brought you here. There's no such thing as a free lunch. We haven't brought you in without whether you want to talk about <laughs> anything which is grinding your gears at the moment about spirituality or what you do, how you know you're in a a good circle, a good space, a good connection with somebody. Mm. Have you got any like things you look for? Yeah, things I look for for the positive is always trust your gut. It will never, ever let you down. You can walk into a room, you know someone who's upset, you know someone who's happy. You know that first time you meet someone and go, don't like you, and I don't know why. Mm. And you know what? It's a human reaction, and you're allowed to because you're reading their energy, and energy doesn't lie. Mm. Sadly, people are very good at wearing masks and stuff for the first time. It's like... um when I used to do job into when I used to interview people for jobs and stuff, you would always see this yeah. polish <laughs> exterior yeah. kind of but you've got to read the energy. Yeah. Trust your gut. If something feels off, it's trust it. Because it does mean that there's something off there. If someone who ego is a massive thing for me. Now I know we talk mm. about there's a lot of talk about ego in the negative. Yeah. Now there's a couple of types of ego. There's the ego, the bravado the i'm better than anyone else i've been there i've done this they're the ones to run to the hills from uh because if someone it's all about them putting themselves on a pedestal mm. that's not who you want to learn from in my personal opinion now there's the other form of ego which is the one that is supposed to stop us from maybe running off cliffs or getting run over it helps us to discern um dangers like crossing yeah. the road whereas in my case it tends to be broken or i'm just <laughs> stepping out in the wrong time in the road um, <laughs> it's a bit iffy but no um for me it's like if someone if it's all about them and it's and it's not allowing you to find your own path because at the end of the day it's a guidance mm. it's not a set of rules uh, one of the things that I do when I run a meditation circle is I'll be the first one to go. If you don't follow my journey, that's OK. That's all right. You're going to go wherever you need to go. Um, sometimes if you go for a meditation, you might fall asleep. That's OK. Um, you don't always have to follow the person. And because it's your guides will take you where they want you to go. And you should be allowed to go where you need to with it. Mm -hmm. 
but it's the honesty it's the integrity you can read that energy from someone straight away and if anything feels off question it if it still feels off step back go really sorry not for me and find yeah. the right route for you yeah that's so important and um i think my own personal and i'm going to get on my own band box here but mm. It's so important, especially for people who are starting their spiritual journey. It's really yeah. important at the beginning of your spiritual journey to be given the empowerment. And it's all about empowerment to yeah. say exactly what you said. If this doesn't resonate, keep looking because just, just as there's a medium for every message and a medium for every recipient, there's a circle for every developing medium of people who are interested in developing. It, and I think it's also really important as well for that really tender space just before you're about to give your own public reading, your first public reading or do your first demonstration or you're, when you're going into that more like fledgling phase because you're mm -hmm. so vulnerable. You you know, you've got some things, you can do some stuff, but you're in such a tender space and people's confidence can be absolutely decimated. So it's really, you know, actually, it's really interesting, actually, when you um, speak about that, because I've I actually I created a group for people who were beginning their spiritual journey because I found it when I started mine it's only been really quite serious I think for the last couple of years um but when you go and ask people some questions and they look at you like that you should know the answer just because this is something that you're into you know and they look at you like you're daft and and I feel like um I found a lot of people who have been on their spiritual journey quite a long time they don't like to bring a new people into it, mm. you know? And so it's yeah. just like when I had, I had an experience, you know, and I went and asked someone about like, what is this like experience? And they said to me, just for example, it's Christ consciousness. And I was like, well, I'm new to this. I don't know what that is. But mm -hmm. they, they, I was just sent off on my way, you know? And it was just like, that's what it is, yeah. you know? And they, they were done with the conversation. Well, I'm like, well, I was left there like, well, what, what does that mean? You know, like, who do I talk to now? And that is a big problem, I feel at the moment is. like trying to deal with like conversations with spirituality you've yeah, got new grinds... people joining it all the time yeah it, it grinds Run my upon. gears yeah mm. Pri primarily yeah. because it's the very thing that we should be fighting really hard against is to remove mm. the jargon there's a lot of jargon there's a lot of psycho psycho babble is the word that used to be used a long time ago like psycho babble a lot of um jargon like christ consciousness and an ascension and these are words that when you're coming mm -hmm. into it all you know is you just feel a certain way and stuff is happening in your experience things and you don't have a word you don't have a frame of reference you don't know what that means um, no. but there's an awful lot of hiding as well behind that with people that don't mm. really know what it means they just have heard it people people like to overcomplicate stuff yeah that's the problem. Ego, they like, like to you overcomplicate. Said. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And also, it's like with these words, it's like, oh, well, I'm going to sound, and I'm sorry, there are some people who think I will sound like more knowing, more intelligent if I just throw these words out there. But you, mm -hmm. like you say that, you go to them and say, well, okay, explain it to me. And they're like, because they yeah. don't really understand it themselves. And not mm -hmm. one person will know everything. That's the most important point. Anyone that claims that they know it all, mm. run. <laughs> because mm. they really, you know, um, we're always learning. We're always learning. I mean, I had it, I mean, that when you did my tarot course the other day and there was uh, two of you that saw fish on the land. Yeah. I, I think, I can't remember what card it was. I think it might have been temperance or something like that. I can't remember yeah. which card it was. Mm. And I was like, eh, what is the yeah. fish? When I looked in, I was like, Oh my God! <laughs> Have I never seen I've that? Never seen that. <laughs> years. You know, and I'm like, even I learned something new, and I thought that's really cool. Mm. <laughs> you know, it's something daft like that. But not one person knows everything, and I think that's the most important thing. And we're always learning. Your spiritual journey—it's a clue in the name. It's a it's journey. Progress. It's not a destination. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's but it's really interesting. So the, I suppose um. I suppose it's giving people the confidence. So the more people like, you know, this conversation tonight where someone goes, oh, yeah. actually, yeah, maybe I am right to use a bit more discernment. Um, one of the things that I'm very aware, so primarily coming from 
um, places where we set up safe spaces for people to be able to talk psychological safety. Um, I think that there would be a real advantage to bringing that into the spiritual movement um, so that actually spiritual teachers, people who are teaching in circles, actually start to drop some of those principles um, yeah. because there's an awful lot of not safe stuff, oh, not safe stuff happening. Um, you know, my something that appalls me is the number of people who have been made forced to accept messages from mediums on a platform exactly and it's yeah. like wow it's no <laughs> we're still doing that we're still doing that so oh we could be here for a couple it's, of uh, hours richard settle in people <laughs> but it's a massive no no isn't it you can't huge. It... it's huge <laughs> mm. it's a huge huge but, subject huge subject and then people... jess has made a really good point the, uneth the unethical mediums. Yeah. Well, that kind of ties in with your forcing you to have a message. And, you know, if someone, I mean, I'll always say to people, if you can't take the message, tell me. Because either I've got to go and get more information, especially if you're doing a platform event, you might find this yourself. You go to one person, they're like, nah, can't take that. But it could be for the person behind them. Because when it's in a group environment, it's a lot harder to try and home in. Um, but even on a one-to-one, -one, I'll say to people straight away, um, and this is, again, my personal belief, and anyone claims that they can do 100% through readings, they're lying, they can't. <laughs> I always say, we're not God, we're not superhuman, and Christ, I'm a bloke. Um, <laughs> but not, tonight, like, Minty, not tonight, Minty, well, not tonight. Why not tonight? <laughs> I, might be, I, might be, I might be, like, in the 90s then, rather than the 80s, 90s, <laughs> if I'm an honorary woman. But no, I always say you should expect a high 80s, 90s percentage wise of accuracy. That's what I like to work to. Um, but even I will still get things wrong. And I will say, well, you know, never 100% right. And I will either go back, ask for more information, and then realize I've probably read more into the message than I needed to. And I did my own personal information in there because that's called being human. Or I've just got the message back to front. You know, it, there are nine times out of ten, I'll be like, um, for, ex for an example today, then I said to someone, you've got three children. And she went, yeah. And I went, you've got two girls and a boy. And she went, no, I've got two boys and a girl. And I'm like, oh, OK, you know, <laughs> it, it happens. It goes that way, you know. Uh, and I was like, well, there we go. See, I do get it wrong. Um, and it's OK to admit when you get it wrong. That's important. You can't just go to someone. No, you're definite. And I've seen it. No. Mm -hmm. You've got to take this message because their talent. It's like, hang on a minute, no. <laughs> if, if you can't take something, be honest about it. But I think mm. it comes down to, and I'm going to come to Karen's question because you asked a really interesting question mm. for tarot cards there, Minty. That what I've witnessed, and I've never met you in person, but I've seen you working on this channel a lot, and I kind of like like the way that you do it. And um, you've obviously done a lot of work on yourself. Mm -hmm. You've obviously, because I think the two go hand in hand, that for me, you've got to do both. You can't just develop the psychic toolbox of how to get a link, how to pass a message, how to pick things up, how to hear things, see things, smell things, say things, whatever. Um, you've got to do the, the self-examination as well, because then you can sit there with that element of vulnerability to say, hey, guys, it's all out there. And my, I, I, I own my own stuff. I know my own stuff. I know how my ego works. I know, I know, obviously you'll always be caught out by it eventually, but um, <laughs> I I know how this stuff works. Because if you don't, you're just, you're just like a child playing with a box of matches um, that doesn't yeah. actually have any concept of some of the damage that you can do. And you've got to have self, you've got to use self-reflection as part of your practice. You have. And there's also certain ways of telling someone something, you know, there's mm. some times where I go to some very, very difficult situations mm -hmm. or certain points in people's lives. And you've got to deliver that with empathy, compassion and yeah. delicacy. And one of the things that really annoys me about these, some of these uh, online readers that I've seen is the lack of that or the yeah. rudeness. And yeah. we'll probably come into that a bit later on, but that really does. I mean, I don't tend to get angry very often, but no mm -hmm. <laughs> that one that one pushes my buttons yeah when someone has no empathy compassion mm. um integrity honesty gentleness it's gentleness mm. be gentle with people you know mm. we're dealing with people's emotions here we're dealing with people 
who some people, not all, but some, are in a very, very delicate space. And I think you mentioned it earlier, that, that safe space. The whole idea for going for a reading is when you're in a safe space, I always say you should never leave a reading feeling worse than when you came in. Mm. If someone left one of my readings feeling worse than one day, I'd be mortified. I really would. You know, there is always hope. That's one of the most strong, powerful things that we have. There's always hope. Sorry, I've digressed. You wanted to ask the question. No, no, no. It's it's absolute and it's really, really important. It's really important stuff. Um, and actually, you know, we have a duty and certainly, you know, Anyone that's watching at home, if you hang around SPTV long enough, you will see an awful lot of readings being done. And um, you learn by watching, uh, if you, whether you're developing in circle yourself or developing independently or on a Zoom circle, however it is that you're unfolding your own spirituality. And some of you will be amazing mediums. Some of you will be amazing tarot card readers, healers, speakers, whatever. Um, it's having the understanding that um, you need to watch a lot. You need to witness a lot. And then use your own kind of reflection to think about, hmm, how did that sit with me? What did I like? What did I not like? Um, and we've got a beautiful opportunity in front of us. It's on all the time. <laughs> From the company room. <laughs> <laughs> Super. So, you, so should we should we talk about Karen's question? Because you've asked a cracking yeah. question here, Karen. I don't know when um, that Minty, if you want to um can you read out for me, but... please? I'm yes, I could read it, of course. It's um, from lovely Karen, um, who's the one who saged her ex-husband out of her house. I love that, Karen. That's just like, that's just genius. <laughs> oh, well, to start, Karen. I love that. You set the tone perfectly. Um, Karen said, I learned to read tarot cards in lockdown. Yeah. But the past year, I haven't had the energy to pick them up again, and I've had a lot going on. Any advice to get back into it? What's your thoughts? Or Penny Ruff? So, my first thing is to never rush anything. Mm. when the time is right for you you will get that urge to pick up the cards it might be you need to find a new deck of cards and that the cards that you've got you might not resonate with as much as when you learn and you're ready for a new deck so maybe it could be one of those have a little shop around there's these silly little myths that go around where it's like oh you can't buy your own tarot cards or you should buy your own tarot cards ignore all that there's, I've got decks that have been bought for me, and there's also decks I've gone out and I went, I love those. I'm having them. <laughs> Did it the other day. Um, <laughs> literally. And, you know, find ones that you really resonate with. And just sometimes I would say, if you're feeling the urge, that it's not necessarily about doing a reading for anyone, but just have a little sit there, have a little shuffle with them, put your energy back into them. I like leaving mine by the, well, when I get a new deck, I normally have them by the side of my bed because it soaks up your energy. I know that's one of the things mm -hmm. that people say. Um, <laughs> they do kind of say sleep with your tarot cards, but to be honest with you, if they're under my pillow, they're going to irritate me all night. So by the way, it's <laughs> totally fine. Um, but yeah, just have a shuffle with them. Maybe pull yourself a card a day or every other mm -hmm. day, pull yourself a card. Just see how it resonates. But the most important thing is if you're not feeling ready to, that's OK. They will come back. But you might have stuff going on in your own personal life that you're needing to focus your attention on and work with first. And going back to a little bit of uh, what you were saying earlier, Ashley, you have to do your own healing at the, mm -hmm. as well as your spiritual work at the same time, because it's through your own healing and understanding you'll find you'll probably get a lot of people that are going to go through similar experiences of what you've gone through and you're going to be able to help them a lot more because saying, well, actually, you know what? I was in your situation a year ago and I tried this. This might work for you. Yeah. So you can give that extra advice as well. So, yeah, that's my advice. You know, it's quite interesting that you talk about that. Um, I remember that I went and I had received a message at... Um, at a spiritualist church and they said to me about that I should be doing tarot readings and they said if you don't pick up your cards and use them you kind of like you if you don't use it you lose it kind of saying mm -hmm. what do you think of that what do you think when they said that like use no. it or lose it that makes no. sense doesn't it it doesn't make sense because it's there and yeah. you know there's been times where um especially before I did this full time you know 
I'm not being funny. I've working in a I've worked in pubs for 13 years. I was mm. doing like 80, 90, 100 hour weeks some weeks. You know, mm. I weren't picking my tarot cards up then because I was either mm. putting a pint or going to sleep, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it, was like, it was how it kind of was. But no, it's not that at all. It's one of those where it's like with Reiki. I've had mm. friends of mine who have been, who've got Reiki tuned years and years ago, and they're just mm. starting to come back into it. And they're like, it's, it, I always describe it like riding a bike. Yeah, it's like a muscle. You never really necessarily learn how, forget how to ride a bike. I mean, if you saw me on a bike, you'd be a bit concerned because my balance is god awful just on two feet, uh, let alone two wheels. <laughs> <laughs> but no it's like learning to ride a bike it's one of those it does come back yeah. so no the using it losing it no mm. i don't agree with that no, at all definitely not but it sounds like you need to get back into a relationship with your spiritual practice karen um and mm. tarot cards may be it for you it may not be um because you know we're multi-passionate multiple competent you know mediums aren't just tarot card readers they have multiple different ways, different facets that your spiritual your spirituality will work. So try something else. Um, I love the fact that Minty's enabling you. I'm not sure if you're some kind of like Amazon associate. I'm not sure, but there are other places <laughs> to buy tarot cards. We're massive, we're massive enablers. We're enablers on here. So if you, if you want 30 yeah. decks, then do it. Just make sure the Amazon man doesn't arrive when your other half is in the house. So what's that? Well, it's just like, a little tarot card deck. <laughs> they're like crystal. You can't just have mm. one. You've got to have hundreds. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, that's really good advice there, Karen. So hopefully that helps. Um, and I don't know if you've ever heard of um, tarot diaries. Um, so don't don't blame us if you end up with hundreds of tarot card decks. Um, mm. But maybe get into a relationship with your tarot card again. I like a tarot diary. Pull a card and then just journal mm. what comes up for you and what, how that resonates with where you are. Give yourself a reading. Pick one. Yeah. And journal about what is that saying to me where I am today and what I'm dealing with today. And you will, do you know what? That will give you so much really juicy stuff for the next time you do do a reading for somebody and you pull a card, you're going to go, oh, okay. So when I pulled this, this is what I was going through. Oh my gosh, this was happening. This was happening. And this is what I read from it. And that will all be filtered into your readings for other people. Mm -hmm. But um, spirit want us to live here and live this life and live this human experience. So it's not all just spiritual practice. So good luck shopping. I love, <laughs> I love the question before as well. Someone asked, what's the best set of cards to go for? The ones mm. that you're drawn to. The ones you use. There's no right <laughs> or wrong way. Um, you know, if you like right away, go for right away. If you like the light seers ones, which a lot of people are using, I'm That's loving what them I've got. because of the colour. Use those. It's no, there's mm -hmm. no right or wrong. It's what you're doing. I don't think there's any shame either in reading the book that comes with the tarot cards because it gives you yeah, information in there as well. Yeah, R yeah. Rider, Rider Waits, the And the reason why I tell my students to start with Rider Waits is only because there is so much information out there and it's kind of not universal, but it's a really well-established system. So, yeah. you know, it doesn't matter what version of it you are. Um, the pips will mean one thing and, and, you know, the court cards will mean one thing and they tend to kind of stay mm -hmm. within that. If As soon as you go outside mm -hmm. of the Rider Waits system... Um, and there's some amazing systems that other people have created. You you kind of you lose that ability to be able to say this this is the solid ground I'm stood on. Um, I think it's with the weights as well. It's easy. It is. It's a good one. So I always, for me, I'm not a fan of my weights. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I love teaching with it. And then I'm like, right. That can go to one side. I'm going to go and find one. <laughs> exactly. But no, the light series is really good. And what I really like about it is it's so diverse as well. It's great for doing readings for people um, because it kind of covers different ethnicities, different, um, every, every different type. Um, and it's amazing. So it's a really, really good empowering deck. I really like that one. It is. Super. So Debbie, what's your, so Debbie, oh, I think Debbie's given us a story of someone you've seen. See, it's TikTok. TikTok. Lady on TikTok told her viewers, if you write the word please instead of please, then she won't read it as it annoyed her. Oh, Debbie, what do you uh, mean by that? What the, if, I know what she means. Do you know what you mean? Go so on. She has I, to I, I it. Yeah. So they made it, they actually wrote the whole word instead of the abbreviation. Oh, so wow. Otherwise she wasn't going to give them a read. That's amigo mint, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Isn't it just? <laughs> okay. Wow, okay. That's a bit like the old school thing, isn't it? That you weren't going to get a message in a church unless you looked smart if you couldn't go to church wearing jeans, that kind of thing. It's quite old school. Um, Krish, one medium told me that I came from a very dark planet. Krish. Oh, what? I'm so sorry you had to experience that. Oh. This is what makes me very sad. Makes me very angry. Yeah, Krish, <laughs> that's... Hopefully, that was a long time ago, Chris, and you have absolutely your own amazing discernment that you realise that that is not coming from a place of truth. Or a place of love. No. And it'd be really interesting to know what the what the business proposition was after that, and I'm just going to leave it at that, you know, to mm. be able to heal you from the trauma you came from, that dark planet. Um, oh. It's rife, isn't it? It's just full. It's like the World West out there on social media sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Interesting question from Helen. Nat, you've just um you you you're doing your healing journey, aren't you? Healing practitioner journey. Yeah. So um Helen. I get so Helen's put I get told all the time I am a healer and not sure what this means and how I can develop. So you know, sometimes people are just like natural healers, aren't they? I just think sometimes you can be in people's energy and you just make them feel good. I think sometimes like um, maybe a lot of people come to you as well and they like they discuss their problems with you. They're just quite happy to sit in your energy, not maybe like a natural healer. But if you want to develop it even more, then I think Reiki, like I've done Reiki. So that's helped me like develop my healing and that a bit more. But there's loads of different kind of Reiki. So there's like the Yusui or um, you've got the angelic Reiki or people have done what, like crystal healing and things like that. So it just really depends on what you're interested in, Helen. So I hope that kind of helps. Anything from you guys? What do you think? I've been reading is uh... yeah. Well, read yeah, oh, yeah. Doing tarot reading, kind of healing, and that as well, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Talk, talk to your guides, Helen. I don't know if you meditate, but um, ask the question, journal it. However, it is that you get that intuition and that intelligence, and say mm. to spirit, "Is this for me?" And I want to work with it. Um, and just because you get told you're a healer, okay, so another thing about integrity, let's get into this. Let's get into this. Another thing about integrity. Um, one of my pet phrases in circle is it's not for the medium to open your Christmas presents for you. So in the same way, say you've got a guide and their name is da 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 and they are this and they are that. Okay. Is it evidential? Mm, controversial. Um, and also, um, I'm really annoyed about that because I want to find out who my guide is myself and get the little snippets and the little bit of intuition and find out who they are and, and recognize their energy. So um, I don't know how you feel about it, but being told you're a healer from the platform is great. But if we unpack how the medium got that information, is it because they're looking at your aura and there's a lot of healing around you at the moment? I don't know. We don't know how that medium's working. So if you feel that you are being drawn to healing, as Nat said, go and have a look at Reiki. As, as Minty said, there are there's more than one type of healing. There's lots of, <clears throat> lots of mediumship is healing. So um, go and investigate it, Helen. Normally, if I get the feeling, and I do obviously say this to people, I can pick up if they're going to be a natural healer or a natural mm -hmm. reader. But they will say to me is because people, like Nat said, yeah. people like being in your company. Mm. You're very good at listening, but you resonate with crystals or you work with crystals. A lot of the time, they've already done Reiki yeah. or something. And I'll be like, you do Reiki or, you know, yeah. healing in that way. Um, so it's like I'm already picking up that they can already do it. But if mm. someone's there, it's like you're, I normally get told that they're like a natural nurturer, care mm counselor and they love raising other people's vibrations yeah. but then also like a lot of the time i don't know about you guys tend to find that they also tend to forget to actually heal themselves oh. or give mm -hmm. themselves that same self-love that they give to others i'm just as guilty for this one at times and it's about yes it's great raising other people's vibrations but you're allowed to raise your own as well mm -hmm. There's a whole conversation. We've already stacked up the next six shows, but there's another conversation <laughs> here. <laughs> it's really, there's another conversation here about, um, the, you know, the shadow side of healing and the shadow side of being mm -hmm. a healer. And actually we all love rescuing and helping people, you know, in that drama triangle, we, we love to be the ones that are doing the helping and the saving, but we, it, there's something about asking for that healing ourselves as well. Mm. I still do. I well, still go to a healer. 
Mm. Yeah, I'll still go get healing done myself. Yeah. Mm. I come to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like Alma. Mm. I'll go to the trees. Yeah, I saw I that. You, I go to the trees. Go and hug a tree. Yeah. No tree is safe. In your <laughs> <laughs> no tree is safe around that. Not anymore. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> Love that. Much? Oh, hug a tree. No, it no. took a while. It took a while. Yeah. Until I went and saw like a, yeah, a druid healer and she was like, go and hug a tree. And I was like, okay. <laughs> now it's normal. Don't listen, don't normal, listen yeah. to your partner. <laughs> <laughs> no. Love, love it, love it, love it. Cool. So um, we're going to do one more question. We must get onto the readings because I have all of my 35 decks here. Um, I'm joking. I don't have that many decks, but I do like to have quite a selection. So it's tickled me that you mentioned having lots of different decks. We need to get on and do some readings. But um, should we just take Sue's question? I was going to mm -hmm. say very quickly, but you can't answer this question quickly because this is a beautiful subject. Sue, Sue has said, any tips on sitting in the power to raise your vibration? So, so I suppose we should start off by saying what is sitting in the power for anyone who doesn't know what sitting in the power is and why mm. we use it. So um I don't know, Minty, do you do you sit in the power? Do you meditate? How do you how's your spiritual I do practice meditate. Mm. Um I've got a beautiful oak tree in my local park uh that I will go to and sit I'm a, I'm a I am a tree hugger. Uh, <laughs> and I will go and sit with my tree and I actually um visualize that i'm connecting with the earth i'm connecting with the earth energy i visualize roots coming out of the soles of my feet and burying their way deep down into the earth to i've always visualized it like a ball of white light energy mm. and my roots tie around this energy and then it's like my my roots turn into straws because they start to suck the energy up into my actual being uh mm. this gives me a protection bubble to yeah. work in it helps with grounding and if you want to use the word sitting in your power it's kind of doing that but it's finding peace calm and clarity within yourself it's learning to quieten your mind and i love well me i just love the countryside i love the air i mean i'm i am if i could live in a wood um you know i would um and it is it's just connecting with the earth and that for me if there's problems on my mind or if I'm wanting to reconnect or if I really feel like there's a lot going on, that can normally read me like a book and would be like, you need to get to your tree. And it was something we talked about the last couple of days, isn't it? So mm -hmm. I actually went there yesterday and it was just like, ah, oh, my old friend. Yeah. And it was like his arms were going around me and that and it's brilliant. Uh, so that's my kind of version of it. Mm, lovely. Thank you. And there's no, um and cool. i want to sorry no it's cool <laughs> and i was going to say so if you are interested um there is a really really wonderful spiritual work and i'm going to say medium but he's far more than a medium to a lot of people um but adam berry does a free sitting in the power on a monday night on facebook go and check him out adam perry medium um and it's following a principle um of sitting in the power as it's taught through many kind of SNU churches. And so there's lots of different ways of doing it. The same as there's lots of different ways of delivering a message. There's a lot of different ways of doing healing. There's a lot of different ways of sitting in the power and doing what it is as was beautifully put to kind of reconnect with yourself and your own energy um, and kind of ground yourself. And I, I call it sitting with God, communing with God, mm -hmm. um, being held by that divine power. Um, yeah. However you want to call it. Now, have you got anything apart from tree yoga? Have you got any other? How do you sit in the power? Do you do the? I raise my vibration by singing yeah. and dancing around. <laughs> like I said to you uh, last night, uh, like, you should feel good, doesn't it? Put in your favourite music and just dance around. My pets put up with me dancing and singing to him last night. <laughs> that's like that's it makes you feel good, doesn't it? it put does. your favourite. She has some powerful music that you can sing along to. It I does. love that. Rhythm yeah. and vibration is the oldest medicine. We heard mm. our mother's heartbeat for nine months, and it's the oldest medicine, mm. music and vibration and sound used across the world and lots of different spiritual practices. Mm. So, yeah, why not? Why yeah, do we have to sit in to silence? Meditations. <laughs> yeah, you can listen to meditations as well, can't you, on YouTube and, like, the old That's sound frequencies and all that. That's good, yeah. So, Sue, go and play. Go and investigate. Go and try different things. Mm. And what works for you today might not be what floats your boat tomorrow. So just keep looking and searching. Um, but it's really important. It's really important. I recommend Pink Floyd shine on your crazy diamonds. 
That intro is amazing. Oh, <laughs> love that. Love that. And don't forget to come back on Sunday night because we're going to be doing the top 10 chart. Just I'm showing my age. Virtual <laughs> 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 music. Amazing. Right, we need to get into some readings. <laughs> Do you remember the record and play at the same time to try and record it? Some of the people are going to say, tape player? What's a cassette? I don't understand. <laughs> oh, shocker. Shocker. <laughs> Shocker. Uplifting music. Go and play, Sue. Go and investigate Sitting in the Power and go and check out some amazing stuff on YouTube. Insight Timer. Ooh, Insight Timer does some really good stuff as well. Um, again, that's another app that you can listen to meditations on. And of course, and of course, SPTV have their own stuff. If you're on the app, go and check that out. They've got loads of good stuff on there and they've got meditation shows. So, um, yeah, come and hang around, Sue. Come and, come and see what, they, what they've got. Super. Right. Do we want to do some readings? Because we could chat about this all night. <laughs> well, I'm going to let you guys go first because I've been I sat here fiddling with my pendulum and I broke it. So, I was gonna, oh, I was no. like, <laughs> so oh, I'm going to have to pick another pendulum to see you Oh, that is so funny. <laughs> right, so go I'm for it. I'm getting frustrated with like everything being said with what's going on in the world. But... <laughs> and you're breaking the pendulum. I love that. I, I love do. That. I do. <laughs> Super. Well, right. Yeah. So we're going to pick somebody for a reading now. So have you been drawn to anyone, Minty, while you've been here? Uh, Any names or is there anyone or should we flash some names? Not up? yet. No. <laughs> oh, well, some names no. Let's have some random names. Please do. <laughs> you don't have to be called random. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> do you know, I love people that have got really interesting profile pictures. There was a lady back there with a python. Yeah, that was so cool. Amazing. Cut. Right, anyone? Do you want to go first, Minty? You can pick the first one. Uh, yeah, I can go first. That's not a problem at all. I mean, if anyone's got a particular question they'd like an answer to as Ooh. well, by all means, pop a question up. So I like giving answers to questions. Who we got going? Mm. Katie Newkirk, let's come to you. Let's come on come down, Katie. You, Katie. First of all, thank you for letting me link in with you. And if you can respond as quickly as possible, if you can take the message or not, that would be absolutely fantastic as well. Also, just one thing, please, please share and like this live. Invite your friends as much as you can as well. Katie, first thing I'm getting for you, I'm getting I'm getting a lot of, I get like a bit of an excitement kind of feeling. I've got like, you know, the butterflies in your stomach, that kind of feeling. And I'm feeling like there's some uh, really important new beginnings coming up. I, I, I'm, I'm being drawn to that this is work related as well. So I don't know if there's like a, I feel like I've changed my job or I'm about to start a new job. Does this make any yeah. sense at all? Because it just feels like I'm about to do this or I'm anticipating and I'm, I certainly feel like, yeah, no, it does feel like I'm about to start a new job. And they're just saying, don't worry, it's all going to come together to breathe through it take your time it does feel like a new career um but it's exciting times and you're someone that doesn't like sitting still it's like you do like to be busy so this is going to be quite varied and you're working with lots of different people on a day-to-day -day basis they're also laughing saying so you love to have a natter with people as well so you do love having that close rapport with people if that makes any sense at all i hope it does um, if you can give me any confirmation on what I'm saying, I'd really appreciate it. I hope this is making sense and is getting right. Um, say that again. Slow down. I'm needing to get a job. Okay. Mm. Wow, well, I still feel like there's new work coming in very, very shortly. And it is going to be dealing with the public on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm working with lots of different people. Now, I wouldn't have ruled out caring or nursing or something along those lines because it is like I'm helping them, but I'm also getting that little bit of a natter going on as well. So that's the line of work I feel like you're looking at wanting to go into. You are a natural counsellor for people, though. I do feel you're the sort of person, if you said hello to someone on a bus, within half an hour, they're pouring their life story out. But you will give people the time you love listening to people. So I hope this is all making sense. And thank you for the confirmation so far. Um, I am being shown new work by the end of April, beginning of May. So I do feel like there's been application forms filled out or I've got application forms to fill out. 
and I feel like there's responses coming back in the next couple of weeks. That's what they keep showing me. Now, I'm actually using a new deck, Ooh. and they're my Witches Familiar Rune Oracle deck. Now, bearing in mind they have got runes on, and I can't read runes for Toffee at the moment because I'm still trying to learn it myself. But I'm going to use these cards on an intuitive way. So I am going to pick you a quick card. Um, okay. Forgive me if I also don't pronounce the names right. I think this is Isa. That's the name I want to get. But it's a bat. And I'm drawn to the bat because it's one of those where, well, actually, I'm drawn to like the half moon but, or the full moon behind him, actually, because mm. it's like I'm coming out into light. I'm coming from the darkness. I'm moving into the brightness. I'm moving into light. I'm drawn to the crystals at the top as well. So I do feel like there's been a huge amount of healing going on over the last six months for you. And they're saying that you're ready to shine your light onto the world. You're ready to step into this new beginning, so to speak. And it's like he's ready to unfurl his wings and wake up to come out into the world. That's the feeling that I get. And it's one of those that you, and like I say, you help many, you're going to help many different people on a day to day basis. That's all I'm getting. I hope that makes sense mm. and I hope that helps. But thank you for letting me link in. Lovely. And conflicted in what to do job wise i still feel like it is going down like a nursing caring counseling it's helping others in the community that's what i feel um it, that's where i feel that you're drawn to if that makes sense at all beautiful thank you okay hopefully that makes sense katie Lovely. Yeah, no response yet. She's probably frantically <laughs> typing. Love that. Love that. Super. Oh, thank you for the confirmation. <laughs> well, well done, Katie. Thank you for joining us. And thank you for joining us on YouTube. And um you've got you've got the whole reading now to go back and re-listen to again on a replay. So you can kind of just keep it as a little bit of a reminder to yourself. <laughs> 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 oh lovely something you don't need school again <laughs> go for it katie go for it the world is your oyster beautiful yes please i don't mind going next i've got these ones burning a hole <laughs> uh, Karen... Marianne, i think i've read for you before I think I know. leslie Leslie, 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 you've got two little munchkins on your sofa. I don't think I've done a reading for you before. Um, Leslie, I've been drawn to the Work Your Light Oracle, which is a beautiful one that was oozing Divine Feminine, which is amazing. Um, and the card that I've been drawn to from the Work Your Light Oracle by Rebecca Campbell is Play. And you can see it's just full of joy and exuberance. This one is saying, um, this is time for you to celebrate. So I don't know. Uh, quite where you are at the moment but um, this is a really important twofold one of them it's a sign from the spirit world that in your energy actually there's there's a, a need and a yearning to celebrate what you've accomplished because we're really rubbish at that we're really rubbish at giving ourselves a pat on the back because as soon as we've done something good um, the yearning within us is just to keep on to the next one but it's really important to complete the cycle we've been talking about tarot that is a cycle it's a journey it's it's seeing its energy through the conception through the delivery to the culmination you've got to celebrate the culmination so this is telling you to have fun and celebrate um and i also think on a deeper meaning here this is about celebrating who you are celebrate who you are and what you've overcome and where you've come from and how you help other people and how you interact in the world and how you move with gentleness and the fact I've been drawn to the divine feminine card um, is also telling me that you have this nurturing energy um, that is that um, energy of you enable other people to shine you enable other people to see the softness within themselves um, you've got that natural ability, that maternal instinct. And when we talk about maternal instinct, you don't have to be a mum. You don't have to be a mum or a nana or a 
auntie or anything um this is just what comes from your energetic signature that you're a very nurturing person um but what it is also saying is please don't be too serious with yourself so um i know that you um i, I say i know i'm getting a, a really strong feeling that you're quite an introspective person you tend to go inwards quite a lot and uh, ruminate over things that have happened um please don't be too hard on yourself um we are on a journey we are all learning and we know more today than we did yesterday um so spirit wants us to learn and experience and it's by the stuff we experience we can move ourselves forward but it's not losing the sense of fun um so this is very much um bringing a sense of fun to you um, i'm also being made aware of a beautiful um eye shape and um i've got an absolute passion for anything as nat knows anything egypt um so i'm seeing kind of the all seeing mm. eye shape um as well so um, whenever i see this this also is a bit of an indication as well of that psychic awareness that third eye opening so whether you are sitting in circle whether you are developing um kind of what we were talking about earlier find a really nice soft landing space find your tribe find the circle that resonates with you find the development group find the spiritual teacher that resonates with you and then just allow your softness allow your natural mediumship to kind of unfold and develop and if it is in a very feminine energy then allow that to happen you don't have to be forced to stand up on a platform and <laughs> deliver messages like a shotgun a machine gun everyone works differently you do it in your way and if you have a very soft welcoming way then that is the kind of lean into that lean into your skill you've got a connection to turkey lovely very nice the all seeing eye it's a very very protective symbol yeah so um oh that's what i'm wearing guidance. wow is, is it, it? Nice? yeah love that Beautiful. Well, i love them yeah i got married in greece and so we had the all seeing eyes little enamel ones as our wedding favors for people to be able to put them oh, on little bracelets so cool. and oh, kind of wear them so around. Cool. And, <laughs> yeah we got we got married in them um, a beautiful place we went abroad and got married Thank you, Leslie, and thank you for letting me um, work with you for a reading and wishing you all of the beauty and all of that lovely divine feminine energy around you, kind of nurturing and celebrating you and raising you all up. Hopefully that resonated with you. Thank you very much. Oh, Wendy! Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy's on. Wendy, you need to talk to Nat. She's broken her pendulum. You're <laughs> furious. You're absolutely I was, furious. I was fiddling. I was fiddling. <laughs> hello wendy we've all been sending healing Aww. to you wendy hopefully you're feeling a bit better oh we miss you oh hello wendy okay now have you got some <laughs> you hastily well, oh. um we oh. <laughs> thank you do we want to take a break just while i'm charging my pendulum is that all right yeah. and then we come back yeah. and i'll do I've, I've got my angelic I've is got my charge... angelic little will to do. Does, I does am charge, charging does, my pendulum. Does charging your pendulum mean you're going to go find some gaffer tape to go and fix it? <laughs> I'm using a new oh, one. Vincy is the one that you bought that. me as well. I'm so sorry. You're going to need more sage, Nat. You're going to need more sage. <laughs> you ain't getting rid of me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We were we're just gonna go for a break while that dashes off to go and find some cable ties or anything else you can use as a pendulum. And we'll be back in two so minutes. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Help Spiritual Psychics TV grow our TikTok channel. Connect with us at SPTV UK. We're on a journey to reach our next milestone and we need your help. Follow us today and support us going live. Imagine getting personalised readings, discovering your card of the day and so much more. Don't miss out on the opportunity to explore new adventures with us. Follow, engage and transform. Join our growing community at Spiritual Psychics TV with at SPTV UK on TikTok. Introducing the SPTV app, your digital spiritual guide for an enlightening journey like no other. Immerse yourself in a world of audio and visual content crafted to inspire, educate, and entertain. Seek guidance with our card of the day, choosing up to six cards for personal insights. Enhance your daily life with our wellness section, featuring nutritious recipes, affirmations, and balanced living tips. Explore our spiritualism section for a deep understanding of the religion, its principles, and spiritual answers. Unravel the secrets of the Clares and broaden your spiritual horizon. 
easily find local readers, therapists, centers, or churches with our comprehensive directory. Stay connected with live broadcasts, check our schedule, and get to know our insightful presenters. Delve into the meanings of angel numbers, crystals, and a comprehensive list of divination meanings. All of this and more, available for free on the SPTV app. Download now at sptv.uk forward slash app and start your journey with your digital spiritual guide. Join Adrian and Jay tomorrow morning from 11am UK time for their show, Spiritual Insights. They'll answer your spiritual queries, conduct guided meditations, and provide oracle card readings to those who actively participate in the show. So, set your alarms and get ready to awaken your inner self. You fixed it, Nat. Right, well, okay. no, I've, that was gone. You have to freestyle <laughs> I've got myself, it. I got myself a new little one. <laughs> so we work with what we can, right, at these desperate times. <laughs> do you know what? It's it's spirit saying, right, put your money where your mouth is. You said the spiritual practice you need to do is the one you actually used. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, so anyway, so I'm, I am, I'm a big believer. We were talking about, obviously, protection and things tonight, but I'm a big believer in the angelic protection. And so, well, yeah, so I just thought I'm going to use the angel wheel this evening to see if we can get some messages through for anyone who would want a message from the angels this evening. Okay. So let's see who we're going to be drawn to for an angel message. Oh, hello, Steve. Good to see you, bud. How are you doing? Oh. Um, Patricia, can we have Patricia, please, from Canada? Hi, Patricia, how are you? I'm going to connect with the angel wheel for you and just give you a little message from the angels. Okay, so if you just bear with me just a second, see what comes through for you. We're all in anticipation of this now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's picking between actually a couple, but I think the, the main one that we're going to go to at the moment is um, Michael, and also it's one to balance as well. So we we'll see. So Michael is actually one of my favourite archangels to work with, and he is one about protection, isn't he? And that is the conversation I think tonight we're talking about. And um, it's saying to you that Archangel Michael is letting you know that he is here to protect you physically, emotionally, and spiritually. He wants you to know that you are safe and secure in a powerful presence. Fear not, for he is with you. Choose and Michael can indicate that there are some changes, a job, relationships and so on that you need to make in your life. Whatever obstacles stand in your way, Michael will fill you with the courage and strength to make these changes. Archangel Michael is a symbol of truth and urges you to look deep inside yourself and discover your true nature and be true to yourself. I don't know if there's anything that you normally do, Patricia, that calls in angels or if you've been seeing. When, when Michael, when I've worked with Michael before in the past, um, he gives you like little signs, you know, like if you're having like difficult um, times at the moment, he may, you may see like blue sparkles and that sometimes. That is kind of a connection. Oh, he's your favourite. He he's just beautiful, isn't he? And he comes in like, I remember one time that I was doing actually a meditation and he came in and I think I saw him. He like around the corner just to let you know that he's there every now and again so just call him in he comes up like um glittering glittering like sparkles a lot of blue and that as well so i don't know if you're attracted to anything blue and that at the moment and gold um and he also like maybe you've got a connection like i like swords right that's <laughs> just i like my connection with michael i do i have like these, swords, like these daggers and you know so i don't know if that's so that just came to me there so i don't know if you have an interest in like armor and things like that as well but if we talk about like spiritual armor don't we mm -hmm. and you can look into bringing like your i know it's just going from one thing to another it's like things not slowing down for you but um maybe like when the one thing to work with is obviously the color blue to call in archangel michael think about like what kind of if there's any protection in that that you need at the moment you speak to him you can ask him for any protection and that in your life 
and um, truth. And also, he works well with cutting cords, doesn't he? Mm-hmm. Like, if you need to release anybody, you're saying, oh, Blue Orbs, have you seen Blue Orbs? That's amazing. But, like, um, he works well if there's anyone that you need to release and that as well in your life, that he's also a good angel to work with then. But, yeah, excellent. Thank you, Patricia. And I really hope that helped for you. <laughs> you're going to have to oh, tell yeah, me after the, afterwards how that angel board works, how the angel mm. pendulum works. It sounds amazing. If that makes sense to you, Patricia, I really hope that helps. Beautiful, thank you. Mm-hmm. We're going we're gonna to spin the wheel again for you, Minty. Okay, cool. <laughs> Who we got? Who, Who we got? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. That's cool. That's not a problem. Oh, that's nice. Nice. Frish, I'd like to come to you, please, if that's all right, Frish. Um, I don't know if you've got a particular question or not, um, but I was really drawn to your energy, and you've mm. got this, like... Sorry, say that again? Okay, cool. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. Uh, but, Chris, what I'm getting straight away is you've got this amazing energy of making people smile, making people laugh, and you love raising other people's vibrations. But they are saying, remember to, funny enough, talking about this earlier, remember to look after you as well. Now, as you've obviously already tweaked, I'm a bit of a tree hugger, and they are saying you're needing to get out into the countryside at the moment and getting a bit more grounded and a bit more rooted. I have been drawn to my uh, amethyst crystal as well because they're wanting to bring some peace and they're saying there's peace and calm coming in and i don't know about you but when we had the uh, solar eclipse the other day it's kind of left energy a bit up and down like a roller coaster i think this is another reason why they're saying go and connect with a tree or a rock and get yourself nice and rooted um say that again you're very much on your spiritual journey and your spiritual path, and they're ple- they love how you connect with them as well. And I do feel like you're working as a medium or you're starting to kind of see, hear, smell, feel them around you. And I feel the hardest thing in the world to ever do is to learn to trust what you're being given. And, you know, even the, the years that I've been doing this, I still sometimes find it hard to let go and trust. It's called being human. So don't over question, don't overthink. And they're just saying, it's all right, you got this. You can do this. And you're helping many, many different people. And you love learning. You love going to different courses. So I do actually feel that come the end of May, beginning of June, that you've either got some workshops that you're looking at going on or you've already signed up for them, but they keep wanting me to get you into a drumming circle. I feel that drumming is that vibration, is that frequency, is that earthiness again. Um, and I feel like you would really benefit from that. So I don't know if you have got your own drum or you're involved in a drumming circle, but they're sort of saying, I give it a go, you would love it. It's like, I want to give everything a try. And it's just try. You was very affected by the eclipse. Yeah. The emotions were up and down and they're just starting to tail off now. That energy is just starting to tail off. Um, thank you for the confirmation so far. But over, over the weekend, just try and get that little bit of time for you if you can. Um, show me that again. Chanting, singing. I feel like I want to sing. I want to release my throat chakra. I feel like you love singing when you're on your own. And it is like I want to stick a Disney CD in the stereo or something, you know. And one of my favorite Disneys is Moana and uh there's a song called you're welcome and i think it's just a great upbeat song and you can have a real good old dance along with it as well so i'm feeling like i'm one like nat did last night dancing and singing i feel like you could really do that but you want I, oh they're showing me a party oh where's that you got a party to go to at the end of may i feel like there's a bit of a friend i feel like it's more friend than family but I'm celebrating someone's birthday. You love celebrating birthday. No, I'm not drumming. I want to say give it a go. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I feel like I've got a friend's birthday celebration. But you're giving it a go. <laughs> Thank you. I love it. It's awesome. Um, 
but they're showing me that there's a friend, but it's like, I want to celebrate a friend's birthday around the end of May. And it's like, you love celebrating other people's birthdays. I feel like you're the one that is like, if I'm going into work or I'm meeting up with a friend, here's a cake. Mm. If you're happy to send me a cake, I would love one. Um, <laughs> I like cakes. Um, but yeah, um, that's what I'm getting. So, Chris, I hope that makes sense. I hope that ha you love parties. Thank you. And it is, it's celebrating other people's happiness. That's what you love. It's like raising that vibration. So, Chris, thank you for letting me link in with you. I really appreciate it. Wonderful. Lovely message. I don't know what has been the biggest revelation this evening. Natalie talking about swords or the fact that you love a Disney movie. <laughs> <laughs> if ever there was anyone that I wouldn't think would be watching, singing along to Moana, then that's just an image that's going to stay in my mind forever. And it is living rent free. Dragon free is amazing. <laughs> living rent free in my house that and your sword toting <laughs> Natalie. absolutely blooming brilliant brilliant love that oh kim you should even see what is going on behind the scenes <laughs> amazing right i'm gonna pick somebody out let's, uh, let's if we can try uh, let's see oh thank you for the cake <laughs> and i do love victoria's phone Super. Right, I'm going to um, grab somebody. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. I'll have the jumpy one. Okay. <laughs> Just trying to find who I'm drawn to. Gosh, there's lots of people commenting. Thank you. And thank you for everybody who shared as well. It's really important. Um, okay, I'm going to go for Courtney. Courtney Lopez. Courtney, if you're on, hello. I'd love to give you a reading. Love to connect with you. Okay. Oh, that one was a jumper. Okay. Ah, okay. So the card that I've been pulled is um, the Age of Light. Um, and this one is an absolutely beautiful card. Um, it's meant to be, um, again, it's kind of linking into that ancient mystery school. So um, the energy behind this card tells me that um, spiritual purpose, your soul purpose, whether you're developing spiritually or not, is irrespective. And when I say developing spiritually, I'm only talking about your spiritual toolkit. So being able to do readings and healing and kind of work with your spiritual energy. But we are always developing spiritually because we are spirit in a human body. So whether you actively participate in working spiritually or whether your spirituality is just part and parcel of who you are, the energy behind this card lets me know that this is something that has just, it's just ingrained in you. If you were to kind of cut you in half, you would have spiritual energy running through your veins, running through your core. Um, I don't know whether you've got a long lineage of, of, especially on that female line, working with this spirituality, but this feels like something that you were just born to come here and do. You were born to explore spirituality, be interested in it. Um, I also um, get the impression from looking at this card as well, that there's an awful lot of energy around your solar plexus um, and the area just kind of in your abdomen um, where there's an awful lot of attention that's being sent there. Um, so whether this is because there's an awful lot of healing there or whether this is talking more about the um, solar plexus and kind of trusting your intuition, trusting your own guidance, your sense of safety in the world, your sense of um, uh, trusting your intuition. Um, oh, fantastic. <coughs> Thank you. Yeah. Amazing. Um this, this card is an exceptionally powerful card because it's coming from the ancient lineage of people who come very closely around people who are working spiritually. Um, so just be mindful of that energy. I, I'm not feeling anything there that, that doesn't feel good, that feels like there's healing that's needed or some, some kind of um, attention given there. This more feels on an energetic level. This is opening up your intuition center. Um, I'm also very aware of triangles around you. Um, and try, whenever I see, I mean, I love triangles i'm an absolute sucker for anything triangle triangle crystals love them um but the triangle symbol to me is an exceptionally stable symbol um and the triangle symbol to me is about um the mind body spirit 
um, you know, the mother, father, child. It's kind of like that perfect union when things come in threes. It's a really nice balanced sign. So this tells me that you're in a place where you're seeking that balance um, in your life, whether that's your spiritual, your job and your family, trying to keep everything in balance. Um, keep persevering with it. The more you lean into your spiritual intuition, the more you'll be guided the re direction you need to take. Um, I'm also aware of um, a spirit guide that comes through very strongly working with healing. Um, so one of the guides I work with is Sekhmet, um, um, an exceptionally strong spiritual guide um, working with you at the moment. And I kind of feel like there's a lot of that energy where they're desperate for you to just get cracking. Whatever it is you're going to do, they're desperate for you to get cracking. So if you're on that pathway, more power to you. Thank you, Courtney. Hopefully that makes sense for you. Lovely to work with you. Yeah. Beautiful energy. You've got very strong energy. Courtney, you are strong. <laughs> You're the kind of person that I would love to have to sit with and spend some time with. You've got an absolutely cracking spiritual energy, really, really vibrant and fizzy. I love it. Thank you. Mm. We're in stunned silence, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm sure if we petition hard enough, we could keep Richard in for another hour or so, but we can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> we can't do that. Thank you, Courtney. Thank you. So we've been called to time. Now, I'm sorry, we're not going to get to see that spirit board again, but I would. Could you hold it up for the folks? Because you were fat, you were kind of like holding things over. What is it? Oh, It's just a wheel and you hold the pendulum over the top of it and the pendulum goes to where it's drawn to. And it tells you, yeah, gives you a message. Well, that's pretty fascinating. I love that. And I'd love to hear more about yeah. you working with angels again. Maybe that can be what we talk about next time. I'd like to do some angel Reiki. Mm, angels, yeah. That would be amazing. That would be amazing. So, you see, Richard, the people have spoken. No, we can't. We can't. We get told off. We get told off. We get told off. <laughs> You've been on all day, Richard. <laughs> 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 no i know we can't. we've just we've just been given a really long list of reasons why we can't stay on live i know you guys would so um but please do keep sharing and liking and putting your comments on and um if you didn't get a message tonight um then please have a think about what really resonated with you. And if there's anything there, you go, cool, that was really close to my experience. Then that is how the intelligence of the spirit world works, that sometimes there'll be things that resonate with you as well. We've got, we've got to say thank you ever so much for Minty for just being here and looking after us, ah, giving instructions by Wendy to look after us both. Oh, <laughs> I am oh, so grateful for you guys to have me on show and it's been a real pleasure so thank you so much for making me an honorary sister oh well you know where we are every other thursday eight o'clock <laughs> i know you i know you come and i know you come and check in and join us um it's really we really enjoyed this evening nat i know you're going to go and frantically try and fix that pendulum now but um i'd love to hear more about your angel board your angel chart yeah i'd love to be able to like talk more about angels and um deities is a good subject that i enjoy talking oh, about as well so maybe that's maybe that could be another show another maybe show. that could be a next one oh, so, yeah, yeah. Cool. if you've got okay. a subject you want us to talk about um please do message us um message the sptv channel um drop us a message drop a comment um it would be really interesting to get some feedback we know each other now this is what our fourth mm. show you know the way things are kind of going. So if there's something you're really interested in, then please do drop it into the chat and um, we can have a look at it and then see if we can um, put it on, try and persuade oh. Richard to controversial subjects are good. We'll we'll see if we can tackle it. <laughs> Just so he doesn't need any comments. He's up for it. Brilliant, 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 brilliant. Super. It was. So, um, yeah, lovely to have you with us all. Um, if you are um, interested in what's on tomorrow, nine o'clock tomorrow, Spiritual Insights. Uh, we don't have the lovely um, Minister Ashley um, on the channel, but um, there's loads of goodness, loads of goodness for you tomorrow um, and also on Sunday as well. So do tune in at nine o'clock tomorrow. Minty, when are you on next? What have you got on next? Oh, I'm actually thinking of doing a live on my own page on Saturday evening at 7 p.m. I think it is. Uh, there will be uh, details being put up either tomorrow or Saturday morning. 
Amazing. But I'm actually back on SPTV a week Monday. Lovely. And we got Sarah Warman on Saturday night. Ooh. Ah. Ah. No, that's absolutely cool. What time's that? Eight o'clock. So I will go on live after Eight that o'clock. show. Sarah's lovely. Please do come and check out Sarah. She's lovely. She's like a pocket rocket of energy. She's a lovely medium. Yeah, do come and check out at eight o'clock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and I've got a new circle starting on Tuesday. So an in-person circle for brand new beginners. So I can't wait because I love working with brand new beginners that have just got the like first twitching energy of interest in working. So I can't wait to work with them. Um, lovely Steve was on earlier. Hello, Steve. Can't wait to start working with you. Right, we must disappear because Courtney's interested. <laughs> Richard, what's your favourite dessert? <laughs> you're trying to bribe him. Oh, you're trying to bribe him, Courtney. I like this. This is good. <laughs> He's not answering. <laughs> Rhubarb crumble. Not sure how that's going to transport through the post. <laughs> messy, messy. Oh, Rhubarb crumble. Bless him. <laughs> So, yeah. Courtney, it's rhubarb custard, rhubarb crumble with lots of custard. <laughs> well, there we go. You wait, there'll be loads. Good job they don't know what your dress is, Richard, because you'll end up with like a doorstep full of rhubarb crumble turning up. Lots of just eat deliveries. Thank you, everybody. Um, we must disappear. We'll see you in two weeks um, for another show. If you've got anything you want to talk about, then drop it into the comments. We look forward to seeing you then. Oh, see you later. Bye. 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 Bye.